and I work at the Centerville Regional Library. And today for Art at the Library, I'm going to show you how to stretch your own artist's canvas. I'll show you how to do a 9 by 12. What you need are two 9 inch stretcher bars for the short side and two 12 inch stretcher bars for the longer side. These stretcher bars they have uh, corners that are pre-cut into these nice little notched angled corners and they slot together. Let me just go over some supplies you'll need to stretch your own canvases. So you need the stretcher bars, you need the canvas. I recommend using raw canvas, unprimed. These are, this is cotton. They sell it by the yard. So you can buy it off of the big roll, however much you need. It's wide and then I have a whole roll of it. As I stretch canvases, I save the scraps. So this is a scrap. There's your canvas. I like it to be unprimed because it's much easier to stretch. It's kind of stretchy. Once it's primed, it, it doesn't stretch very well. Then you need a staple gun and the staples. Then you need stretcher pliers special pliers. they got a nice wide gripper thing. They've got this funny bump here that's like a lever that you use to stretch. You'll need something to check the squareness of your corners. I have this nice angle thing because my husband has every tool in the world so we happen to have this. You don't need something this, this fancy. You could just use a triangle, a T-square, or you can rely on measuring diagonally, corner to corner. If they're the same, then your corners are square. So that's always, I always double check with measuring diagonally anyway. And I also have this nice long ruler for that purpose. You could use a tape measure too. Okay, let's get back to putting our stretchers together. Twelve. I'm going to check the square corners now. Just to make sure it stays like this, I like to put a few staples in each corner on both sides. done. Let's take our piece of canvas now, lay it out, put this on top. We're going to do a gallery wrap. We're stapling it on the back side, not on the edges. This way you don't even have to frame your painting. You can just paint the sides and it'll look wonderful. Okay, now you're going to start to staple from the center one staple on each side, across from each other, from the centers out. I like to start with the long side first. The first staple, you don't need to use your stretcher pliers, so I just use that, just get one staple in. I like to press down on the staple gun to make it have a good, firm placement. Okay, now for this, the only time I use my stretcher pliers for stretching is for this first staple across from the first staple. Take your stretcher pliers and you pinch the fabric between them and then you make sure that this bumpy thing that bumps out is facing away from you. Open this up. See the pliers have like teeth almost? Like they're ridged. That makes them grip the canvas really well. So get in there. Pinch it right across from the other staple. 
then pull, push it down. It's a nice tight stretch. If you get it over the edge of the lip of the stretcher, it's even easier. So once you get it as tight as you want, not too tight, you don't want to rip it, drive in one staple. Tap them in to the other side. All right, done with those. Now the rest is just with your, your thumbs. Just stretch it and watch the weave so it doesn't go like that. Try to keep the weave pretty straight. Go about an inch out from the center on either side on the long edge. Then you turn it around and do on either side right across for those. Also kind of pulling towards the corner as you pull it. So we're getting near the corners now. Uh, I like to do the short side all the way to the corner and leave the longer side open about two or three inches out from the corner. So let me do these short sides all the way through the corner. All right, now we're ready for the fancy corners that I like to do. So what you want to do is kind of like making your bed. If you were just using a flat sheet and making hospital corners, it's like that. What you do is you pull up on this, you push it in uh, so it's flat on this side, and then you just fold it over. All done. Very nicely stretched. It's very tight. The corners are nice and flat, not very bulky. All ready for the gessoing stage now. This is the brand I like, Liquitex Professional Gesso. I usually pour this out into this uh, kind of like a Tupperware thing and then I can dip my brush into it. it. I don't have to thin this or dilute it at all. It's really nice and the right consistency right out of the bottle. Other brands I've used are so thick that you have to dilute them with water, but this is the kind I like, so I've been using this one. Um, and I, I store it, the extra in here. It stays good if you put saran wrap under the lid. And this is the brush I use, just a normal house painting brush. This is a really well used one. It's nylon, flat, two inch, two inch brush. So I do three coats, um, three coats of gesso. And after each coat, let it dry, sand it lightly, then do another coat the other direction, let it dry, sand it, three coats of gesso. Then after you do all your gessoing, the final coat is with this. Also Liquitex Professional, it's called Matte Medium, which also is what you would use if you're painting with acrylics to thin it rather than using water. It's a fluid medium and it <clears throat> dries matte, which means not shiny, but it sort of seals the gesso, which can be kind of chalky. And if you do the final coat, 
after all the gesso is dry, if you do the final coat with this, then your surface is perfect for painting on with oils or acrylics. And then after the, this dries, final light sanding. I hope you want to try this and give it a shot and happy painting.